The first change you'll notice in Renoise 2.8 is the choice of 64-bit versions for both PC and Mac, allowing you to make use of more memory and run more efficiently on your 64-bit machine. The DSPs included with Renoise run natively in 64-bit mode, but most third-party plugins still run as 32-bit applications. This is not a problem, however, as the plugin bridge will automatically allow you to use them. This works for both DSPs and instruments. And also included is support for Rewire 64-bit. One of the key points of version 2.8 was to improve your workflow. And to aid with this, there have been changes made to the sequencer and the pattern matrix. The first new feature are aliases. This allows you to create clones of pattern slots, and so any changes made to one of these aliases is copied and present in all of the others. Note that this does not apply to automation, and so using this with the aliases, it is very quick and easy to build up a song structure. The next feature is the ability to grab a pattern slot and copy its information into other patterns. This is also true of multiple slots, and it will copy aliases as well. And finally, we have the section headers. This allows you to insert text into the sequence, so you can clearly show the different parts of the song structure. This can be incredibly useful to plan ahead and show exactly what's happening within the song, especially when used in conjunction with the old pattern comment system. The big new feature for tracks is the ability to group several of them together. Note that as they are added to the group, their routing is changed from the master channel to the group itself. You can, however, add a track to the side of the other tracks instead of within the group itself, and this will still route it to the master channel while being present within the group. But you can make changes to this by using the usual method. There are a few advantages to using groups. The most obvious one is that it's better organised. Also, if you solo the group, then all tracks contained within it are also soloed. And most importantly, all the tracks contained within the group will be affected by DSPs, automation, and pattern commands. It is also now possible to collapse tracks, giving you more space within the pattern editor. You can also collapse groups with the option for the right side only, or the entire group itself. And note that this will also collapse the group within the pattern matrix. Collapsible tracks also has an effect on current track only mode. All the other tracks are still visible, which makes it much easier to move between them. And finally, we have an improved colour picker, with the ability to save colour swatches and enable background colours for the tracks, one at a time or all at once. The first new DSP we have is the multi-tap. This uses up to four separate taps, with settings for delay and feedback, as well as the volume. And there is also a side section which controls the filtering of each separate tap, giving you excellent control over the echoes coming from the original signal. Next is the repeater, which functions quite a bit differently from the usual DSPs. When it is activated, it takes a chunk of sound that is currently playing and repeats it. You can use the controls on the left side, but it's much more fun and easier to use the grid on the right hand side. With the hold button on, the current settings are kept active. When turned off, the repeater will deactivate when the mouse button is released. This allows you to repeat different chunks of music as a song is playing. And of course, using the right mouse button in this mode will record your settings. 
Next is the exciter. It has three separate frequency bands which are adjustable as well as the choice of two different band modes for each. It's primarily a mastering device which is used to add brightness and width to a final mix but as usual it's just up to you to decide how to use it. The final addition is the meta mixer. The way that this works is it takes three separate inputs from other meta devices and combines this into one final signal which is used to adjust the parameters of another device. So for device A I have the key tracker which takes the note data from this track. For B I have a random LFO and for C I have the signal follower which responds to the volume from this track. They then combine to affect the cutoff parameter from this filter device. There are min, max and scaling options as well as the weight from each of the three inputs. This alters how much effect they have on the final signal compared to each other. The EQs have been improved with three different display types and as requested you can now automate every single parameter. The crossover filters on the multiband send device have also been improved and you now have the choice of five different types. And last but most definitely not least send devices now have a panning option. The sample editor has had numerous tweaks and additions. The first of these is significantly faster sample loading. Just how significant? Well to demonstrate this is a 362 megabyte WAV file which is being loaded into Renoise 2.7. I won't make you wait, that took 102 seconds to complete. And this is the same file being loaded into version 2.8. That took roughly 2 seconds. A brand new feature is the ability to take a sliced sound and render each slice into its own separate sample. This allows you to then go into the sample key zones tab and make changes there where you previously could not. Another much requested feature is finally with us. Samples can now be edited separately in their left and right channels. We also have five new sample tools to play with. The first of which is insert silence which you can use either via the dialog box or you can make a selection on the sample and silence of that exact length will be inserted there. Similar is mute, which will mute your selection but not insert anything in there. There is invert phase, which does exactly what you'd expect. And next, we finally have a swap stereo channels button. The final tool replaces the old crossfade. It is now a crossfade loop creator. It looks at the sample and then generates new data within it creating a smooth loop for you automatically. Perhaps the biggest shakeup of this release is with the pattern effect commands. Although the values in the two rightmost digits still use hexadecimal, the commands themselves do not. They now make use of all available letters. So the global commands now start with Z, well, the sample commands have been given appropriate letters. The advantage of this is that now we can address up to 34 DSP devices, where previously this was only 14, and now we can make room for more sample commands. And indeed we have three brand new ones right now. There is tremolo, and autopan, the third one is set envelope position and in order to demonstrate this I will make use of another new feature. The sample envelope editor now has an external editor button. If you press this it will open up a much larger version of the graph giving you finer control over what's happening. But if you also press the detach button this will open it in a new window and you can move that around and resize it as much as you like. And with this in place you can now see what this command does. 
the play point is being directed to these specific points. And this is true of each active envelope. The final rather large change is something that I've already shown you before in the track section. Where sample effect commands in a group would affect all of the contained tracks. This is now also true of send tracks and the master track. There are a few other additions worth mentioning. There's the phase correlation meter. You can also have a side-by-side -side comparison of two tracks of your choosing in the spectrum view. And there's a favorite system for both track DSPs and instruments. And finally, there is an auto update system for both tools and the Renoise program itself. There have been many other changes, improvements, and additions that I have not mentioned here, so see renoise.com for the full list.